All right, so I've been talking about this server rack in quite a few videos now, mainly on my devlogs, but the server rack that I have been DIY making these past few weeks is finally to a point where it's done enough to where I can kind of show it off, talk about it, answer some of the main questions which I'll receive, which are, why would I build this? How did I build this? What's all inside of it? And what are my future plans for the server rack? Let's start off with why did I build this? The reason why I built this was mainly for space saving and just better organization. Previously, this 3D printer was on top, was sitting on that nightstand over there, which was decently well. It was a little bit wobbly, but it had space on the bottom for the filament, printer was on top, and then that drawer was kind of unusable because it didn't really open very well. And that worked out pretty well. And then what is on currently in the server rack besides the filament and 3D printer was all back there on my workbench, kind of just taking up space in workbench, not really making it a workbench usable at all. So in wanting to move all that stuff that was on my workbench off of there so I could actually use the workbench, I decided to take that, combine it with my 3D printer, which was on the nightstand, and make a more permanent home for all of it inside the server rack. So really, the why was just because it saves space, honestly it gives me a nice way to put more stuff if I need to, and just play around with things and kind of make something cool. And uh, server rack was kind of right up there with that, so that's the why. As for how I made this, well, it started, I don't know, it started a few months ago when I started initially planning this whole thing. And originally it was going to be what you typically see on a DOI server rack, which is just a bunch of two by fours that kind of sculpt out the frame. And then you just take some server posts, drill them, screw them in, and you're good to go. And that was going to be the initial design. And that's why I originally 3D catted kind of as a proof of concept. Two by fours, we had a spacer down here for where the filament was, a top on here to put on the 3D print on top, and that was really it. And doing something like that does definitely work for a server rack kind of style. But when I went to talk to my dad, who was the one who really helped me build this whole thing, because we're working quite, isn't quite my uh, my forte with this. I don't have very much good uh, experience with woodworking. So I did a lot of this with him to help teach me, but also just to kind of do a father-son project. But in talking with him for this, we explored some other possibilities. One of which was to find an existing kind of cabinet or organization system and just kind of build the server components into it and that was a good idea but the dimensions of what you can kind of find for cabinets and organization stuff just doesn't quite work out so we brainstormed again and he's the one that came up with this design which is honestly overall much better fitting for my use case because it looks much nicer especially when there's something that's going to be in the background of like a lot of my videos since my camera and my computer are right over here so my webcam that i'll be using will be facing this constantly so honestly doing a more kind of cabinet decorative or just kind of household cabinet top design does a lot better but at any rate how do we make it well we started off by just going to your local hardware store and getting a big thing of plywood now he had a pre-cut to certain dimensions which i'll try and list below what those dimensions are but he got the plywood pre-cut to certain dimensions that way we can make our lives much easier with it and from that we took two of those Made on the sides, we ended up cutting a kind of valley or kind of a cutout in the sides and the bottom of these, one inch from the bottom, to where we then glued in a smaller plywood sheet that acted as the floor, which is what the filament is currently sitting on. After that was glued in, we kind of clamped it all together and had it sitting there ready, and then we took the top. Now the top is basically the same as what's on the bottom, however it has a one inch lip all around the outside. Now the top lip there is mainly for look and feel to kind of match what you typically find in your house, but also just because it helps with the 3D print on top, but again, just looks much better than having it be perfectly flat. But anyways, from there we then did the same exact thing where we just cut a groove in it, however this groove did not extend all the way to the front, it extends again about an inch before the front, and that's where we then put the top of this cabinet in, put it in with the sides, glue that all together, and we were more or less done with the outside frame. Now beyond that though, you'll notice that these posts for the server are not exactly in line with the side walls. Uh, this is done for a few things, mainly just for convenience. When we got the plywood pre-cuts, they weren't in a perfect 19 width, so mainly it was just there for convenience. But the way we ended up solving that though is we just took some 2x4s, cut them to our desired width to kind of a spacer, 
and then drilled those or screwed those into the sides here to kind of mount them in there. Now, unfortunately, I made a mistake and I gave the wrong uh, width dimensions for how the server rack is. I said 21 inches instead of 20 or instead of 19 inches, which is a typical server rack width. So, unfortunately, I had to go on and print some spacers here, um, which you'll see these 3D printed spacers on the sides there to give a little more width to squeeze this down into the correct 19 inches um, to make things actually work and be the correct width. So, small miscalculation on my part, but at any rate, it's still there and that's still fit the whole thing and it's still very secure. And then with all that in there, all thing was left is just to paint it black, just kind of give a nice matte black finish uh, painting. Nothing too fancy, it's not perfect, but it does well enough. Um, down the line also maybe look into getting some kind of finishing for the front of these on these edges because currently you can just this is plywood um, so it doesn't look as nice as the rest of it but honestly I don't know so but yeah there we go that is the how we made this and more or less uh, did it now there are four total uh, server posts only two are in right now there are two more that will go in the back I just didn't 3d print out the spacers for those yet so that's why they're not in yet but there eventually will be four in there that way I can put things here in the future, which I'll get to in a bit, um, and then also include rails that'll go from the front to the back and be secured in that way. So let's now talk about what's inside of this. Well, as you can see here, going from the top to bottom, there are only two things that are really in here that it's a true rack mount design. There is the top, which is the switch, eight port, just gigabit switch with four PoE uh, ethernet ports. And that is because those four PoE ethernet ports are used to power these Raspberry Pis. I have three Pis in here, only two are correctly working because I have a Pi 2 that doesn't support PoE, so it's just sitting over here just in a sled. Um, because here, you take the sled, pull them out, put them in. Um, this whole Raspberry Pi 2U rack mount design was found on Thingiverse. It took quite a while to print out, um, like two days total time. It, it, it's a long print to get everything going, um, but in the end it actually looks pretty well and it's really stable and I really do like it and it gives me just the ability to expand in the future. I don't, I'll fill all 12 slots, but I like the this kind of vertical um, styling of it over the smaller 6 Pi design, which is a 1U um, design, but only fits 6. I just like this style better, so that's why I want the 12. Again, I won't plan to fill all 12, but it's there anyways for future expansion or whatever I might want. But at any rate, switch on the top. The Pi's are here. Those are the two kind of main components of what's in the rack mounts. Um, below that though, I have my um, work laptop. Another reason that was over on the workbench that was taking up space, it's now here just on a shelf um, and plugged into the switch. Um, Ethernet cable here, a name of this, I have a lot of cable management to still go. I know that that's something I'll be doing. Um, this is just the longest Ethernet cable I had that could go around the room from here to where the Ethernet jack is, which is the other, other corner. Um, this one was long enough. It's a full 100 meter run because I actually needed one a few summers ago for where I was living, but I don't have one that's shorter but can fit, so I'll probably need to go on Amazon and find one that's shorter than this that can make the run, but also probably need to find one that's longer for myself that can go to my uh, my desktop here because behind me the cables are kind of, uh, you know, dangling a little bit, so cable management still to get there, but uh, at any rate, so that's what's up here. Um, as you can see, the 3D printer is up here on top. Um, got lots of space for its total kind of range of movement, so there's no issue there. I can even put some more stuff up on top here. I got the sides if I want to kind of mount stuff to the sides. Um, but then beyond that, to the very bottom is what I'll be using for filament. So all my filaments are down here. There's space behind that for kind of where the uh, the plugs and stuff are. So lots of room in this. It's very nice. Definitely is an upgrade from that kind of Target cheap nightstand we had I had before. So um, that's what's all inside of it. And then getting into finally what is planned for this well expansion just kind of kale manage expand things up obviously here i got two raspberry pies um i do have a plan for that which i'll get to in a second which is kind of the larger kind of style i want to go with this or what i kind of build this into um but the biggest thing which the pies will be used for is i want to i, I need a nas essentially the biggest thing is that i do need a nas i need some way to back up data i need just a big storage system um, in general, my two terabyte hard drive, my computer is kind of getting slowly full with my YouTube videos and just video I have and just overall things I have. So getting a NAS and just having a way for me to kind of have a central space for not only my computer, but all my server backups, a place where I can do automated server backups 
and do all that is a bigger thing I need to get into, so I need to look into that. But another reason why I want to have a NAS and I want to build my own is because I also want to network boot these Raspberry Pis. The, currently, the Pis are running off SD cards, just as you typically would, but SD cards are not the most uh, optimal thing, especially when it comes in terms of longevity with running these. And if I want to, say, keep one as a build agent, and I want to make one, say, a server or home automation, which is one thing I do and also want to get into with all this is home automation and things around that nature. Uh, SD cards probably just not the best way to go. So server booting these is a very good idea. But if I want to get into network booting these pies, one thing I need is a server to boot them off of. I want a server basically to hold the kind of file system and the hard drive space that would be otherwise an SD card, a place to hold that. So. I need a server and if I'm going to have a NAS already, why not make a NAS myself that could also support the network booting of the Pies. Now, unfortunately, this is a place I have no experience in whatsoever. This is going to be entirely a learning project for me, a learning experience for me. So if you have any knowledge or any experience in this field at all, feel free to leave comments below. Give me suggestions. I'm all ears. Even I'm even ears to suggestions that I didn't say here. I'm not, I'm not tied to this kind of idea right here. All I will really want to be going for is a kind of home automation system to where I can you know, put some home automation on, but also put my Jenkins server on, allow it to use the build agents of this Pies for build agents for the Jenkins server, and just kind of slowly bring things back to self-hosting instead of having everything all around the internet um, for all my stuff that doesn't quite need to be everywhere. Um, so. At any rate, if you are someone or even a company who does this and wants to get in touch, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm very interested in exploring possibilities here. It doesn't even have to be kind of necessarily conventional. As you know, I'm a very unconventional person with a lot of projects I do. So anyway, getting off topic, that's kind of what is coming next for this project. Exploring things, continue 3D print, continue just to make this better, um, consolidate stuff, kind of organize things better and go about there. So, yeah, I think it's about, uh, I think that about covers it. Covers it. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want to see more videos about the server rack as I develop it, obviously they'll be in my dev logs already. But if like I make a NAS system, if you want to see videos about me making that NAS system, leave a comment below. Um, I'm all ears for kind of what type of videos you guys want me to make. If you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to let me know. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.